is up, wrestling card fans? Welcome to Husker Haves Wrestling Card Podcast. My name is Mike. I'm from Mike's Retro Trading Cards. And I'm joined by my tag team partner, Mr. Husker Have himself, Anthony. How are you doing this week? Good. It's been an interesting week. I've uh, had uh, the flu bug here at the house, but I'm all good to go. We're ready to roll. And we have two guests with us. Of course, we've got Mike the Cleaner down in the bottom right corner. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm good. I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> we got Ty the Collector down the bottom left. You're behind the phone that I'm using for my camera, so I have to look down at my computer here. <laughs> but how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I'm good, man. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about Panini taking over the license about a year ago, almost to the day. Uh, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I forgot to wear my cowboy hat and my Clint Eastwood get up. I was gonna, <laughs> was gonna dress up and do that, but you know, I my wife told me I look stupid, so I had to go with that. So, uh, let's start things off. I want to get your guys' opinions on some of the products that they released over the last year. Uh, start with you, Anthony. We're gonna talk about 2022 WWE Prism. Uh, initially, when Prism came out, um, I was really excited. Um, my exposure to Panini was based on my experience with cards from Europe, because a lot of people might not realize, but Panini is a big uh, producer of products over in Europe, especially in the sticker scene, different things like that. So when, when Prism first came out, I was really excited about it. Um, I was really anxious to get it. And then um, um, when the cards started coming out and uh, I started seeing some of the what I would, I guess you could call inflated prices I started questioning a lot of uh, where we were going with this product um, initially when I got my first set in hand I liked the the feel of it I liked uh, the fact that you know the prism was almost identical to anything else that they put out there from basketball, baseball, you know, you name it. So I, I was pretty excited from that initially. Um, but I would say over time from the, the prism aspect of it, um, there was kind of a, uh, there's kind of a letdown and that, and, and that, that was my perspective on prism. Mike. Uh I got a lot to say about prison. Um, we're here for. I mean, I was the guy. I was the guy that was uh, that was completely, you know, just telling everybody, "This is this is nuts. These these should not be the prices. Please wait." Um, everything I did was strictly for the hobby, strictly to help collectors. Please wait on these. These are going to be. These cards are going to be a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. These autographs are being, um, you know, they're being produced through you know, through the ass, you know what I mean? Please just wait, save yourself some money. Um, and, and sure enough, the collapse happened. I didn't think the collapse was going to happen like that. Okay. Oh. I Ooh. expected the boxes. My bottom dollar that I thought they were going to go down to was about $500. Okay. I, I could I even, I couldn't see them going down to 200, but 1400 was absolutely astronomical. Okay. Mm -hmm. For a product that they are printing through the yin yang, Okay, this isn't 2013 Prism basketball that was extremely limited. And don't get me wrong, Prism are beautiful cards. They are beautiful stock, thicker stock cards, the chromium technology. They're beautiful to get signed by wrestlers by paint pen, which pops right off the card. They are beautiful cards, but they are so overprinted mm -hmm. and over, overhyped, pumped. Okay, is that the word we're going to use yeah. a lot today? Pumped. Yep. And yeah. People yep. pumped this product to the moon, and a lot of people lost a ton of money. A ton of money. Don't get me wrong. Prism is always going to hold its value. <laughs> <I lost some. laughs> Prism is always going to hold its value for low numbered cards. Golds number to 10 are mm -hmm. always going to be creme de la creme, okay? They're always going to hold value. There's no question about that. But you know what? A card number to 10 in any product is going to hold its value, okay? Mm -hmm. Because there's 10 in the world, okay? These other cards, you have no clue how many are produced. When I saw people paying $100 for Gable Stevenson rookie cards, okay? And the mm -hmm. guy's never even stepped foot in a, in a WWE ring, and I knew how many were going to be produced, I literally was just, I, I couldn't do anything but laugh. So Prism, if it's at its price it's at now, 
it's a great buy. Mm -hmm. You go and get a box for $200, get your two <laughs> autographs and pull some nice color out of there. You could be doing good, but that's the thing. You have to pull those low numbered cards or you're going to take a bath every time. And that's long and short of prison. It's very high risk with mm. extremely high reward. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's, I mean, that's the breakdown of that. You're playing at the high stakes poker table when you're opening a box of that. You, shit, you sure yeah. were at $1,400 a box? <laughs> you were. Uh, okay, Ty, how about you? Um, when Prism first got announced, uh, well, let me say first that uh, before I was big into the wrestling community, I did collect football a lot, um, a lot of basketball beforehand. I still collected wrestling, but obviously not as heavily. Um, so I was very familiar with Prism. So when I heard mm -hmm. they were doing WWE, I was I was excited. I was like, this is going to be awesome. Uh, that was before I heard what the release pricing was going to be. Um, once I heard release pricing, I started to get worried and I kind of felt like Panini did the wrestling community dirty, um, trying to apply the same template that they apply to all the other sports. Um, and wrestling collectors just aren't, it's not the same audience. And uh, Panini tried to apply that template and immediately I, I didn't think it was going to turn out like it did, um, but I knew it wasn't going to be a, a fun road. Um, and then once, you know, I started, started seeing boxes going for 12, 13, 1400, I, I, I really got worried. And then I saw people buying cases up at these prices, cases and cases. I tried telling people, just wait, just sit, wait, it'll come down just like Prism always does. Um, and every, I, I don't know what the logic was behind people thinking that it was just going to be an endless up, you know, mm -hmm. um, and eventually it crashed and it crashed hard. And um, if, if the situation would have played upside down, if they would have released them at the price it's at now and it had oh, yeah. a chance to build itself, I think <clears throat> right, Prism right. would have went over amazingly. Mm -hmm. um, but the way they did it with the template of applying what works for football to wrestling collectors, I, I think that's what shook the entire situation upside down and blindsided Panini. So, yeah. A couple of points I have on that too. Like, I, I always thought it was a little fishy that the distributors came out right away with a like nine hundred dollar pre order price. The mm. distributors were setting the secondary market before there was even a secondary market. You right. know, I I've had people say, "Well, you can't say it's price fixing bull." Like, I can because I saw it. What else would you call it? They were determining right. what it was, and then oh, guess what? By the way, Panini when they released it to the public, they said at the same price i've always like hated that little connection between panini and the distributors that they mark up a product so much on the secondary market before it's even released and that was part of you know the hype that went behind it plus panini gets a lot of the blame i, I think panini was a little bit arrogant in thinking that I, I think because they had some success with the UFC and getting people to cross over from other products that they, I think they printed as much of the WWE as they did some of their other sports or very close to it. And I think their thinking was that people that collected basketball or collected football were just going to flock to this product. And some did, but overall, I, nowhere near enough did. Like the, there were those people jumping in to make the money quick, but they jumped in, made their money, got out. And then That's all those wrestling collectors were looking around like, well, yeah. what what the hell do we do now? Yeah. So that, that, that's exactly the that's you you hit it hundred percent on the head. It was the sneaker flippers, the Panini families, mm -hmm. and all these guys, and they came in and they made their ducats and they dipped out. Okay, yeah. yep. and they did it, yep. and they and they crashed this whole thing. And then, like like Ty was saying, you got people buying cases and cases and cases. They're sitting on those cases right now, and they are out so much money. That mm -hmm. will never get to its height that it was at before. Never mm -hmm. has yeah. to connect it to yep. 1500 a box anymore. You're, I mean, they're pro they got to be hoping to get half their money back right now at this point. Yeah. You know, I've it's, never it's, seen it's a product drop like that ever. Like that, you know, that was big of a percentage. That was insane. Yeah. It was, it's, it's interesting because I had, I had a, a handful of people tell me initially, 
aren't you excited? You're going to get so many new customers to your store, so many new faces coming into wrestling. And the comment that I made to a lot of these people was that a lot of the new faces that are coming in aren't really collectors. There are people who are buying a product hoping to get a three, $4,000 card that they're going to t- sell in the secondary market. And the rest of the stuff that came in that box, be damned. They don't care anything about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, you, you saw this. You saw this. I'm sure you probably recognize this, Mike, when you owned your card store. You saw that back during the rookie heydays of the 90s. You know, yeah, you would at have a different level, a much in. different level. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. They, they would come in and they would buy something. Hey, I'm new to this. Oh, okay, cool. So what else can I, what else can I help you with your collection or your, or your hobby? Oh, I just, I just want this card. I, I need this 90 Lee Frank Thomas cause I can get $50 for it or something like that. Yep. And, 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 and that was the same thing that you happened with this, with this craze when it came to wrestling. And I was saying that to, you know, people that I knew and, you know, local guys here that, that I do wrestling cards with. And I kept on telling them, stay, stay focused. Don't get, don't buy into the hype. I said, it's all hype. Um, you're going to see over time that you're going to be able to be able to pick this stuff up, especially for guys that are collectors. And when I say collectors, I mean, guys that are going out, um, who are actually working on putting together a set or some of the inserts or maybe rainbows. I'm not talking these guys that are just buying the stuff because they're going to get, you know, X, Y, and Z car and turn around and be able to flip it. And that's, that's what a lot of this was. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. My experience in this hobby, as long as I've been doing it, what I saw with prism initially was a gambit of flippers running in as fast as they could because they wanted to make that quick buck on something new and something hot. Yeah, Mike, I, I noticed that too, even still, like in your Monday night sales thread on Twitter. Yeah. Like you can tell the sports car guys that come in with their PSA yeah. 10 Goldberg autograph that's yeah. like maybe maybe a hundred and fifty dollar card in the PSA 10 and they're asking a thousand dollars for it. Yeah, it's absolutely. Like, those yeah. guys stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, and you know what? It's it's funny because I was actually talking to um, David Peck um, about mm-hmm. when this first dropped, and I would say again, I bring up Gable Stevenson, um, a gold of his sold on eBay. Okay, a gold autograph. Somebody snap bought it, right? Buy it now. I forget what the price was. Okay, I want to say it was like ten grand. Okay, but ten days later, this card was on eBay again from the guy who bought it in a PSA ten for 50k okay those are the guys that came in and made their money yeah and everybody mm-hmm. else was left losing money i have yeah. a buddy who owns a local card store here okay just sells boxes just sealed wax okay he has been in business for 35 years i've known him at least 25 years he won't even touch wrestling anymore because of what happened with mm-hmm. Panini, and he lost so much money I swear to you. Oh, I can imagine. Even, he won't even buy the boxes anymore. Wow. Because of what happened. Because of that collapse. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, we could probably spend the whole podcast talking about Prism, but I want to move us along a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about a better product, in my opinion. Uh, Anthony, what are your thoughts on Select? Um, I, as a collector, I always liked select, uh, for all the other, you know, products that they made, whether it was basketball or football, um, cause I collect everything and, uh, I still put together sets for the d- different sports. So when I found out WWE was doing select, which I knew they would, um, I was pretty excited because I always liked select. Um, when the product initially came out, I had only one qualm about it but uh, for the most part i loved everything about it i thought the photographs were great i thought the designs were amazing great color great everything it's a it, it's a product that when you put it in a binder and plastic pages all the pages look great together i don't i don't know who designed it but i have to give them an a plus on that the only negative that i would say about select is i thought they made the set way too big i don't think it needed to be 400 cards um i i i would have thought a 200 base with a hundred additional cards would have been sufficient enough for that. Um, but you know, that I wasn't had a design or anything like that, but I'm just saying from my perspective, I thought, I thought it was too big of a set. Um, but the one, the one thing that I didn't like was, um, when I finally got my hands on select, 
I ended up buying a bunch of blaster products because I was still working on trying to complete some of my own personal collection. And when I opened those up, they were all red, white, and blues. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize <laughs> that the uh, retail boxes that you buy were all red, white, and blue. I thought that was kind of odd. I would have figured those would have been the same colored cards yeah. as the regular set was concerned. Um, but I, I think by and large, I think out of all the Panini products that have come out for the affordability factor, for the amount that you get in that box when you break that, uh, you usually you break even for the most part. It's worth the value to buy that uh, those panini panini select boxes. I love them, um, and I want to give a shoot a shout out to uh, Paul in Canada, my friend. I think he's the only one that's actually completed the one through four hundred set. I don't know anyone else out there who's done that. So uh, I gotta I gotta tell I gotta tell just people from the collector standpoint, it's a very challenging set. Um, but the more it's out there, the more affordable it will be over time. Um, and uh, stick with it. You'll be able to put together that 400 card set if you uh, keep working on it. Mike? I absolutely love Select. Um, honestly, probably my favorite wrestling product of all time as far as breaking-wise goes. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, you know, and, and what I say about Panini, there are great things, and this is one of the absolute best things they've done. For the price of the boxes, for what you get inside these boxes, um, for breaking accountability, for breakers, okay, for everybody, Select was phenomenal. The tie dice are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the they're beautiful. The fact that the zebras are gorgeous. The fact that you included just the elephants and the tigers in retail makes that a chase for the retail products. You saw retail boxes going over what they should have been going for. That's how you should have done it with Prism, right? So mm -hmm. right. I absolutely love the colors that they come out with. I've loved Select every, like Ty said, you know, I was big in basketball and, and football as well. I've mm -hmm. always loved the colors in Select. And honestly, the value that comes out of both hobby boxes and retail boxes out of Select, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I absolutely love it. The mezzanines that mm. are retail exclusives, honestly, <laughs> retail is, I mean, I remember going to Target every single day to see if they had retail boxes. When I could have went right down the street to Dave and Adams, mm -hmm. which is 10 minutes from my house, and bought as many hobby boxes as I wanted because they had elephants in there, and they had tiger stripes, and they had mezzanines, and, and all this stuff, and they got great value. They hold great value, these cards. I honestly couldn't have been any happier with Select um, than I was with the product. I thought it was phenomenal in every aspect. Todd? Um, I think, uh, in short, I think that Select was the, no pun intended, redemption that uh, Panini needed um, from what happened with Prism. Uh, because, That's a good point. That's a very good point. Because Select, uh, select how Select went is how Prism should have went. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, um, like, uh, like Mike was saying, uh, when I was collecting football select was definitely one of my favorite products, both retail and hobby, um, respectively in their own ways. Um, the colors like the golds and the tie dyes and specifically the, the die cuts from football were something I really favored. I was really surprised to not see those, how they followed everything else, but they didn't have die cuts. Um, I would say that's probably the only downside of select that I saw. And that's not even really a downside. Um, the price point going in was good. It stayed stable. It went up as it should have. Um, the retail was good. Um, collectors in general, you know, were happy with select. And I, I think if Panini came in um, with Prism, how they came in with select, the entire wrestling community's opinion of Panini would be completely different. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, that's the redemption that they needed. And, uh, you know, that they didn't wipe the slate clean, but it definitely it made wrestling collectors want to give Panini another chance. Um, so I think that Select was, I mean, I, I can only say it so much. That's the redemption that they needed. Yeah, that's a fantastic point, too. I was thinking that, too. Like, if, if they would have done prism like they did select think of how much more popular like 
all of their products would have ended up being like they, they lost a lot of people with what happened with prism but yeah select was just so much fun there was so much good stuff to pull out of it i had luck with it too so you know probably my favorite product too uh last one i want to talk about this one kind of an interesting product but uh how about immaculate give us your thoughts on that um, I, I, I'm going to be honest with everyone. <clears throat> I have not broke any immaculate at all. Um, I haven't spent the amount of money for that product. Um, but what I can tell from what has come out of it, um, it's what I would expect for a high end product, um, for Panini. Um, I, the, you know, a lot of people, um, that I know I've said, wow, you know, I'm really impressed with some of the uh, inserts, the large swatches, different things like that. But then when you look at their other sports products with their high end, they do the same kind of stuff. So it's not like it's anything surprising, at least to me. Um, but from my perspective, when it comes to Immaculate, um, I just think a lot of the product, you know, that you're seeing finally come out of people break stuff is, 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 is wonderful, but, I don't understand why people are making, you know, jumping up and down excited because that's what I would expect to get for a high end, high dollar product like Immaculate. You know, if I'm mm. spending X amount of dollars to open a box and I'm getting some kind of relic or something, if I am paying, if I spend a lot of money, I would expect that relic to be pretty impressive. So um, that's, that's just my perspective on, uh, on uh, Immaculate. Yeah, and keep in mind you're spending four hundred dollars for six cards. It's not like Correct. you're getting you know, twenty packs in a box. So Correct. They should be. Nice. It's, it's, yeah. it's 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 kind of like uh, WWE Transcendent. Um, you know, it's 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 almost along the same lines. You know, if you're spending that amount of money, you would expect to get something phenomenal or exciting in return. So I'm not sure why everyone's like um, all all shocked that they might get some one of one here or some number to 10 autograph that has a uh, medallion stuck on or something like that. That's what you're paying for. I would expect you to get that if you're paying that amount of money. At least I would if if I was spending that amount of money to bust the box. Mike? All right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Immaculate. Um, their highest end product that they're going to bring to wrestling collectors, okay? Probably there are well, probably their third highest end that they bring to other sports. You got Flawless, you got National Treasures, mm -hmm. you know, then you got iMac. Um, iMac is a product that you are, like you said, spending a lot of money on the box. When you open the box, you expect your cards to be in the box. When I found <laughs> out that there is 93 different redemption cards in this product, wow. 93 Think about that. Even my head almost exploded knowing that there was a lot in there. Okay. Great thing about this. Um, it is a high-end product. Yes, the cards do look gorgeous. Okay. These triple autographs, these quad autographs, if and when they get filled, are going to be beautiful. However, when you're paying that kind of money, they should be in the product. They should have been right. new immaculate was going to be released. Okay. This is not a surprise. Mm. All these guys should have been signing last year's WrestleMania on these cards. Okay? You knew this was coming. It was going to be your best product. Whatever the case may be, they should have been something that could have been easily avoided. Okay? The fact that these relics do have nice pieces from the shirts. Again, as Anthony said, you've got to expect that. Mm -hmm. Out of a, a box, you're paying $400 and you're getting six cards out of that's what seventy five dollars a card. Yeah, you right, right. That, 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 totally. Can't... That's what. That's what I was getting at. The you amount of money that you pay for that box. Like you, you can't put a shirt relic in it like you did with tops. Yeah. Or right. You got to expect that stuff. But my thing about it is, I went on eBay yesterday and I just typed in immaculate triple auto, and there was two live autographs: one with Braun Breaker and a couple other rookies, and one with Sheamus Butch. And um, Ridge, what's the other Ridge? Ridge, yeah. Ridge, yeah. Everything else was a redemption, everything else was a redemption, and yes, some of these redemptions are, are coming back. Oh, 10 out of 93, <laughs> you're not even putting a dent in those redemptions that are out there. Long story short, I'm at, I've always been a, 
a fan of their product because the white design, the, the, the way the autographs pop off that white design, the beautiful on-card autographs. There was also too many sticker autographs in this product. Okay. Mm -hmm. Way too many sticker autographs for the price you're paying. So in general, iMac to me, I feel like was a swing and miss. I, I mean, I have seen cases upon cases of this broke live and you're, you're lucky one box out of your entire case gets your money to pull yeah. a triple autograph or a quad autograph out of that product or one of those high end cards that it's funny because you see all these people, they put these cards on, on Twitter, right? And they put these amazing cards they pulled, right? You don't see the other 15 boxes where they pulled nothing exactly. uh, in Alexa Bliss autograph. <laughs> like everything you else, yeah. <laughs> you don't see those, yeah. right? You only see that massive hit that they got, okay? And mm -hmm. then you think, oh, my God. And that's, that's the problem with this pump game, okay? That's the biggest problem. That's what makes these people who, whether they can afford it or not, go out and spend this money on products they shouldn't be spending this money on because they're not going to pull those cards. Yeah, those are right. once in a lifetime pulls, man. I've been mm -hmm. breaking. I love breaking boxes. I love it. I know I'm going to lose 90% of the time, but I enjoy it. Okay. But I'm going to tell you this in the 30 years I've been breaking boxes, you pull a, a bloodline autograph book once in your life. Yeah. That's it. You can pull those consistently yeah. unless you're a breaker, but then those cards aren't going to you. They're going to the well, some people they do. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's a whole other thing. Out of one, yeah, yeah, yeah that's another deal. But in in all honesty, man, it, it, it's a it's a swing and a miss for me because it's just not it's just not worth the prices. No, yeah. Ty, uh, I'm gonna tail end on Mike here. Um, I, uh, overall, I think immaculate. Um, subjectively is a good product um from other from football you know it's a good product i think they did good with wwe but at i just checked the prices uh the lowest it was was around 400 the highest it got was around 500 um for average wrestling collectors it's just not justifiable it's yeah. not the right. fact that you're right. having to rip I probably I can't even tell you how many cases I've seen hope open, mm -hmm. and I can probably tell you I've. I mean, I run the one of one tracker. I've probably seen maybe ten cards from Immaculate that actually made me say wow, um, and I've seen endless boxes and cases broken. And with you know, it being a high end product, you should be expecting you know six cards that you may or may not be able to at least get close to your money back but with immaculate they're just they make it almost impossible for you to even get the value of what you're spending out of it One so strictly from from that aspect alone like mike said i think it was a swing and a miss subjectively i think it's a great product the cards look great uh you know the relics are great the autos are great sticker aside uh the redemptions is a whole other thing um Every other Panini product that they put out prior to Immaculate had a grand total between all of them of 49 redemptions. Between all of them. Wow. Immaculate has 93 in itself. <laughs> yeah. More that, than that. That, was crazy. That, that sheer fact right there should tell you something. I don't think they were ready for it. I think it was rushed. They should have been ready for it. There's no reason why. Exactly. They, there's no reason. They know where the wrestlers are. Like they're not hard to find. Like some of the athletes are a little tougher in other sports, but you know the wrestlers are are there at Raw every week. They're at SmackDown every week. They're at the pay per views every month. Like you know where to find them. Right. So send a representative there and have them. How, how hard is that to do? Like mm -hmm. I mean, you know it's your your top end product you're going to release. Plan ahead. It's, it's not like they didn't know they were releasing this. It just it blows my mind. Like he said, 40, 40, however many in all of them combined. Yeah. And now you've got 90. Come on, man. <laughs> and my problem, problem now, can, go ahead. Knock it down a little think? bit more. It's there was 49 in all of them. And there was, uh, I think it was impeccable had 22. So there was oh, wow. 20 between the other three products. Wow. And there's 93 in immaculate that, that alone, it, that 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 tells the whole story for me. 
do you, I was do you think at all that? Go ahead. Do you think at all that uh, maybe Panini um, saw kind of the um, upswing that wrestling cards have had the last uh, year or two since COVID? And they were like, oh my God, we got to capitalize on this with Immaculate. That's why we're going to dump all these. Uh, uh, relics and redemptions and autographs and stuff. What 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 would you, what what's your guys' thought on why um, they went down that road with this uh, this last product like they did? Because to me, I I kind of find it kind of interesting that they would release double the amount in this product. Um, I, I just find it kind of odd. Mike, you want to go ahead? And I and I yeah, and I said that as well. Um, I, I did a whole write up on it when this product came out, um, just about the redemptions in general. I've never seen a product with this many redemptions. And this was before we even knew there was, as Ty ended up calculating. Um, it was just off the first off the line boxes from what I was seeing on eBay. I was literally just going on my phone and typing in on my notes every, every person redemption. I've never seen anything like this before. Never. And my thing is this, okay? They have the license how much longer? Okay? Everybody wants to say, oh, well, Panini's going to be bought by Fanatics and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, not. that's fine. It hasn't happened. Okay? And my thing is this, and this is just a real quick story for you guys. I've had a terrible experience with a redemption with Panini. Like an absolutely <laughs> terrible experience. I redeemed an Aaron Judge 2017 gold standard card that I got out of Chronicles with more than enough time before it expired. Then the pandemic hits, okay? I sent them, and I swear to you, I counted this, 123 emails with not one responded to. <laughs> not yeah, one not responded to. You could not get a hold of them on the phone, no matter what. One day I get an email. They redeemed my Aaron Judge. This was when he already had 40 home runs. They redeemed my Aaron Judge for like 1,400 points, which is like enough to wow. buy the most miserable card on their website. Oh, and then wow. charge, wait, and then charge you $10 to ship that miserable card to you. The card didn't even <laughs> worth $10, okay? Yep. <laughs> I mean, the card didn't oh. even worth $10. So with that being said, I ended up getting a hold of somebody from Panini, okay? I called, I work from home luckily. I sat on my cell phone and I hit redial over and over and over for four days straight until I got somebody from Panini customer service on the phone. I'm, I'm talking to the lady. She told me the reason why that happened was because the redemption was expired. I said, no, 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 no. When I redeemed it, it wasn't right, sir. But now it is. I said, yeah. you guys weren't huh? doing anything. For two and a half years. <laughs> Mike. I go, you weren't doing anything for two and a half years. That's not my fault it expired. Well, that's, you know, that's what's, so now I'm getting a little bit, you know, more, you know, kind of uppity, right? You know, I do sales for a living. So, you know, you're not going to, you know, whatever. So I'm starting to get, you know, throw facts at them, at this lady. You know what she does? Hangs up on me. <laughs> Hangs up oh, on me. Oh, wow. Bro, I swear to you, I have a temper. I have a bad temper. And I almost whipped my phone at the wall. And I'm like, <laughs> but I said to myself, I'm already out a $600 Aaron Judge card. Let's not be out a $1,000 phone too. Yeah. That no. is a true story that happened to me. And that's not even close to some of the horror stories that you hear from people on the mm -hmm. market. So forgive me if I'm warning collectors in my little um, thing that I typed out and put on Twitter about redemptions from panini and please just watch yourself okay they might not get filled here's the best part about this aaron judge and then i'm done that aaron judge card was made i saw <laughs> numerous of them listed on ebay and sold throughout the entire two and a half years my redemption was there <laughs> oh wow <laughs> I, if, it, if it was made i don't i don't understand why didn't you get yours why didn't they send it anthony this is the point I'm trying to make here, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and, I know. This is I know. The point I'm trying to make. I know. Oh, if, wow. if you do open a box of Immaculate, first of all, if you open a box of Immaculate and you don't see a redemption in there, kiss your money goodbye. Okay, kiss your money goodbye. Because any big mm -hmm. card in there is a redemption. Yeah. A anything. So if you see a redemption, 
just my suggestion is, and this is what I was saying, everybody, sell it. Buy the card when it's live. If it's live. And, and that's just, like I say, I mean, that's just, I've seen it. I've been in the hobby too long. I've been through it and back again. And that is my reasoning for saying that. So people can argue or disagree with me all they want about whether these are going to get filled or not. But um, yeah, they're starting to pop now. 10 of them out of 93. So we're, we're doing good. We're, 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 yeah. well. Right. Panini oh, definitely no. has a history of not filling redemptions. Correct. So yeah, there anybody who goes into it thinking, "Oh, you're fine. You're, you're fooling yourself." You don't know how Panini has worked for the last 10 years. Yeah. Right. That's 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 a wrestling fan's mentality that has not had to experience Panini in the yeah. past and doesn't know what they are capable of or what they have done in the past. So, that's my opinion on that. Hey, Ty, you got a tracker. Why don't you tell uh, people about your tracker a little bit and what you've learned from uh, exposing stuff on your tracker? Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, last summer I started um, – originally it was just a spreadsheet to keep track of, you know, what one, one of ones have been pulled. Um, because certain people that I collect and I was getting into breaks and I was, you know, curious and I was like, Hey, I wonder if these guys, one of ones have been pulled, um, that idea grew, um, and it turned into the WWE, or the ultimate WWE one of one tracker, um, which now has every Panini product on it. Um, we have over 1200 to date, um, recorded. And um, the wrestling community uses it a lot. The uh, tracker has gotten a lot of traffic. I've gotten a lot of messages thanking me, you know, that these people, you know, thanks. I, you know, I can stop getting into breaks now knowing the one of ones already been yeah. pulled. I've seen that message so many times. That's cool. Um, but it, it, it was just, uh, I do things, you know, to help the community, trying to make it easier for everybody, like, there's different things I do, but this is definitely one of the uh, things that I've done trying to look out for everybody um, because I know a lot of money gets wasted by people chasing cards that have already been pulled. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that's fair. So I created a tool that levels the playing field for everybody. Um, it that's gives awesome. everybody the information. Um, it's freely available. Um, we're get, I'm getting ready to launch the full website very soon. Um, by the time this video comes out, it might be launched. But um, fantastic! Yeah, it was. It was just something I, I wanted to do for the community to level the playing field for everybody. That's, That's awesome, man. Now, 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 your your new website is going to be the same uh, link that we have on uh, Husker Haves, right? I don't. I don't yep. have to change anything. Same right. website. Nope. Okay. Cool. Website. Just, 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 just want to make sure so we keep that uh, updated as much as possible. Yeah. Oh, and also, um, we were talking about the redemptions. East. I also have um, redemption lists for every product of every redemption I found for those products. That's huge too. Because um, in mm -hmm. years to come, people that are sitting on you know whatever and you know those redemptions have expired. That's huge to know. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yep. And with the redemptions, um, about a month ago, I started marking off which ones have been filled as well. So that's also something Great. that Fantastic. is easy to look at from a from a standpoint, you know, standing back and looking at it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much everything about the tracker. Great. Good cool. stuff. One last thing I'll add about Immaculate 2 and their redemptions. I honestly think a lot of the reason they did it is because they – expanded that set so big and i think they did it for breakers because i felt i think they knew if they didn't make that product the a breaker product that the breakers would just keep buying it and buying it from them that they could have trouble with it so like the set is way too big in that like for six cards in a like you're getting what 35 cards out of a case and, and the set is way too big for what you get out of it. So I think that they might have at some point expanded it on purpose. And maybe that's why they have so many redemptions. I don't know. But like one thing I, I from watching all the case breaks, I was like, why, 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 why do they have 
Mick Foley and Cactus Jack and you know the mankind like and breakers are selling those spots individually. So just I don't know, a little crazy. Over overproduced. <clears throat> That's what Pinini's yeah. they're good at that stuff. And but, you know, I'll, I'll as long you as you make a product that the breakers can make a lot of money on, because they can make a ton on right, that because they this, have so Panini, many spots. Yeah, Panini, don't get me wrong, Panini is good at making money. Oh, so, yeah, they are. They are good at making money, man. <laughs> They're they gonna make, make every last penny they can before they lose that license. Too, That's so. what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. And you know, one more thing too about the one on one tracker, like you were saying, too. I know a lot of people out there they go after these rainbows and, and these panini products, which is which is cool because you you know that. There's nothing to go ahead and look, right, of, of mm -hmm. a player. My my thing is these people go about these rainbows the wrong way. These people go and they buy the cheaper ones mm -hmm. first. And when it comes yeah. to the 101, they don't know if they're ever even going to see it. Has it been pulled? Yeah. Is it yeah. in somebody's mm -hmm. collection? It's not going mm -hmm. anywhere yet? No. The yeah. way you start a rainbow is you acquire the 101 first, and then you go down the line. Because you can always find the other ones because the next step up is you know the whatever the shimmer if you're really going hard is this shimmer it depends on the product right or the next step mm -hmm. up is the number to 10. you can't go and try and put a rainbow together by buying the gold first you just can't that's the wrong way to do it okay well, yeah, it, 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 it really makes you wonder because if you're if you're a dealer out there and you've got some guy who's coming to you and says Hey, I've got all the edges, and I know you got an edge one of one. I need that one edge to keep my to complete my collection. What kind of deal do you think that guy's going to give you on that card? Yeah, exactly. He's gonna. He, know, he knows you need that more than Sucker. anything. Else. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. Listen, you better pull out that Amex black card. Oh, you know, yeah. Amex black. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Get a second mortgage on the house. That's right. Whatever yeah, you have to right. do. Yeah. Yeah, you went about that the wrong way, sir. Yeah. Okay, I have a couple questions here I want to ask you guys. Uh, first one, do you think the Panini has grown the wrestling card collector base? Not the market. We all know with the money, the prices, yeah, the market's up. But do you think the number, like I heard before Prism, oh, Prism is going to like think of all the new collectors that are going to come in and be part of the wrestling card community. I'm not going to give my thoughts. I just want to hear your answers. Okay, from my perspective as a guy who has an actual wrestling card store and sells all over this world, um, I can tell you that there might have been a few, a very small percentage of new collectors who have made their way to our store. Um, but I can tell you over the last year since Panini – um, has been dropped and we started having it on my store. Um, uh, the people that buy from me, I did not, and I had not sold until today, my very first order, which had included Panini products on it. Um, I've had, wow. I've had so many sales, um, probably it was a little bit down last year, but that's because I was having to rebuild my website from scratch. So not everything was up there, but, I can tell you the bulk of my sales have been 90s Attitude Era um, in independent cards. And people, if they don't know what independent cards are, when it comes to wrestling, really need to get educated on that because that's where the money is right now. Um, but as far as Panini Park, like I said, this order that I got today is the first order in which I actually sold my very first Panini product car so um did was there a ton of people coming in like everyone says there is i don't know i don't see it i don't see it myself i think there was a lot of people coming in but there are a lot of people coming in who came in when football got hot there are a lot of people that came in when um hockey got hot when nascar got hot the same kind of mindset and i said to a small group of collectors uh, a year ago around the same time frame that if the new faces coming in are those individuals that came into the other sports when those products got hot i'm fine keeping keeping business with all my loyal collectors mike and to touch on what anthony said um he's selling a lot of 1990s attitude era stuff those are the people that are going to have the expendable income nowadays. Those are the 30-year-olds, mm -hmm. okay? Those are the people that 
are going back and buying the cards that they didn't have when they were kids or they couldn't get when they were kids because their parents couldn't buy it for whatever the reason was, right? Or something they've always wanted. Or even they did have it, okay, and their parents threw it out or whatever the case may be. That's it's, This happens like – it's funny because I do action figures. This happens – Every 10 years when the people get into the age of around 30, right now we're in the 90s, right? They start, you know, when you're in your 30s, you're comfortable, you got your job, you know, usually a lot of times, you know, you're settled down, you have expendable income, okay? That's why people start buying that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that Panini brought more collectors or some collectors in. Of course I do. Of course I do. But you know who else did that? Upper Deck with AEW. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. It's no talk about whatsoever. Do you mm -hmm. remember when AEW yes. dropped what those boxes were going for? Yeah. We want to talk about you want to talk crazy. about you want to talk about yeah. Prism starting up here and dropping down here. How about the fact yeah. that AEW started at a hundred and went up here? Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, and it's talking? funny, it, it's it's funny, it's funny you say that about AEW because that stuff on my store sells, it moves, it moves. Of course. Um, I, mm -hmm. I I know I know. Whenever I put up a new AEW product, it'll be on there, and I'll 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 have plenty of sales within within a few days of that stuff being on there. AEW people don't realize this, and Upper Deck in general, that stuff moves in my store. Still does. Of course, of course it does. So the the thing about the, the Panini is the the collectors that you're getting to come into Panini are going to be more of people that have been in the collective okay more of people that have done other sports and stuff like that the thing about aew that brought collectors in that were indie wrestling fans that knew nothing about yeah. cards, didn't know nothing about nothing and guess what they're rushing i saw people posting posts that they were driving 20 two hour drives just to try and find blaster boxes yeah. and this stuff mm -hmm. yep. i mean yep. aw yep. aw i think brought in more I don't know if I can say more, but everybody wants to talk about, you know, Panini brought all these collectors in. Please don't sleep on what AEW did. AEW brought in a ton of people that are now true collectors, mm -hmm. okay, and not just pump and dumpers, okay? So right, that's my right. opinion on that. And, and, and I would I, I would go as far as saying, too, even the prices that you can pay for an AEW upper deck box – you get value out of those boxes and 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 whether it's the different inserts or some of the different color variations that they do to to me i i don't know i, I if, if if i'm out there right now and someone tells me do you want to open a box of aw or do you want to open a box of prism or revolution um which 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 is, which is the better value i don't know to me right now i think it, i think i think it would have to be aw in my opinion because to me that stuff sells. AEW has a very loyal fan base um, of people who collect this stuff. Right. Yeah. They, they are loyal, and that's, that's what you that, want that's in what the it hobby. Down to is 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 it the collector fan base is very strong, and they have their favorite wrestlers, and they don't mind paying what they need to pay. I when AEW's first product dropped. MJF autographs were selling for twenty five hundred dollars. Come on, man. <laughs> Correct. Come yeah. on. Correct. Let's be Correct. Saying, rec, I sold a regular Joey Janela relic. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, Joey Janela relic <laughs> for seventy five dollars. A regular oh, wow. tiny piece of black. Yeah, I don't even know what it was this big. <laughs> so, oh, all right, Ty, your thoughts on that? Um. All right. So the question was: Do I? The question was: Do you think the Panini, Panini brought in new collectors? To the wrestling hobby. Okay. So did Panini bring in collectors to yeah. the wrestling hobby? I'm going to answer no. Because what Upper Deck and AEW did, like Mike said, they brought in new collectors. Mm -hmm. They brought in real fans who became collectors. What Panini did was brought in flippers and investors and, you know, anybody that was – was trying to jump on the trend. I don't, I don't, I don't call those collectors. I, you know, they, they can identify as something else, but as far as Panini bringing, you know, collectors to the wrestling hobby, no, I think that the same collectors who've always collected tops and other stuff just adapted to the Panini product. But I don't believe that a lot of new collectors came in because of Panini. No. Okay. 
kind of agree with you there too. That's kind of what my thoughts are too. Brought a lot of flippers in and a lot of sports car guys, but I don't think they're going to stick around. So, okay. No. Next question. Uh, 2023 Panini Prism coming out soon. Pre-sales are $300 a box this year instead of 900. I guess I'm asking what is your prediction for how successful their second try at Prism is going to be with $300 boxes. I think a lot of people are going to be gun shy to buy their product again, uh, the Prism stuff. Um, I think if the prices stay fairly affordable, um, they will be able to move product. But I don't know if the hype factor is going to be there like it was a year ago when this first hit the market. Um, I, 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 as a collector, We'll go out and buy it. I because I want to continue my string of sets from the from the first one and keep going through through that product. But I I I would be very leery if you if you start seeing people saying, oh, you know, this is a four, five, six hundred dollar box again. Boy, buyer beware again. You know, we'll 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 see what happens. I I know I know from my perspective, I'll 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 buy it. I'll break some. I'll buy a bunch of on um, the secondary market, which is what I usually do. Um, but uh, oh, I, I I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many people are going to get uh, all uh, excited and uh, go running around to uh, Walmart per se, waiting for uh, CSL distribution or whatever to come stack the shelves. I, I think it's going to be different this time, but I could be wrong. Mike. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I it's definitely, I, I mean, and I'll agree. And I'll, can't even say the dang word. Inaugural <laughs> edition, whatever. The first edition. Inaugural, yeah. We yeah. got you. So, of course, the thing's going to be hyped up, right? This is more of a, what the first see, first year should have been, is two to $300. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen with this product? There's going to be a ton of breakers out there breaking it, okay? It's going to be your typical Panini Prism product. It's going to be overproduced. OK, mm -hmm. it's going silvers aren't going to be worth anything or any of that stuff. And, you know, the only way you're really going to make money is if you pull those, you know, you get two autographs a box. You pull the Hogan's, of course, the Stone Cold's. OK, anybody else? No, no, it's not going to happen. What people need to understand about Prism as a product and as a brand is that you're not going to open a box one out of probably six to eight boxes have a gold in there, okay? Now, not only do one in eight boxes have a gold, you have to get the right gold, okay? Mm -hmm. Gold Santos Escobar right. <laughs> isn't going to sell for, for, what, 20 bucks, okay? I have a Von Wagner. Bro, there you go. Out there. <laughs> but, a gold, but a gold rock is going to sell for, what, multiple thousands. Mm -hmm. What people need to understand is these color blasts, which are gorgeous cards. I love them. I think they're gorgeous cards. Color blasts aren't even one per case. People yeah. think these are case hits. No, 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 my friend. You go and open a case and see when you don't get one and then tell me it's one per case. Those are like one per every four cases, okay? And you know why they're one per every four cases? Because Panini can just make more product and more product and more product and more product and water this down. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to keep happening with Prism. I feel like each year it's going to deteriorate away less and less and be less valuable and less sought after every single year, year after year. Until hopefully Fanatics starts making Tops Chrome again. Until we get some Tops Chrome back. Yeah, I'm waiting yes. for that. <laughs> I mean, don't Top. get me wrong. Like I say, I think I think Prism are gorgeous cards. Um, you know, they are nice cards. Uh, thicker stock, like I say, I think they're awesome for signings. You know, you go, you go and get Bret Hart's autograph mm -hmm. with a pink paint pen mm -hmm. on a prism card. That thing pops right off. The, it looks like it's flying at you. They're gorgeous, but it's just it, it's not. It's never going to be what it once was. Prism is a pandemic product. That's what I call prism, a pandemic product. And prism boomed so hard during the pandemic, and it's just gone down ever since so can i can, can i throw something out there quick do you do you think sometimes when you look at panini products the amount that they put out there is it possible that three or four years from now 
we're going to be looking at Panini as the modern day dirty word from the uh, junk wax era. Basically looking at along the lines of it being like another version of pro set that they produce so much stuff out there that there is just, it's just all over the place, especially when it comes from the wrestling side. You know what though, Anthony, I think all the card companies, except for honestly, upper deck are kind of guilty of that. Tops does the same thing. When you look at top series one baseball, they produce that there's SSP cards are not as crazy. Cards. Okay. Those are no. not SSP cards. I don't care what anybody says. Those things, there's way, there's so many of them out there and people think, you know, it's SSP super short print. They're not, I mean, I think all companies are guilty of that in their own way, but I feel like that's why upper deck shines. Cause when you look at the AEW boxes too, okay. I know this is a Panini show and I know I keep mentioning AEW, but AEW boxes, the regular boxes, which are technically what Prism is for Panini, okay? Yeah, the regular right. boxes. You only get four autographs in a case of 12 cards or 12 boxes, or was it 16 boxes? So you're talking one out of every four boxes has an autograph. That's a way you keep your autographs valuable, okay? That's a way you keep your short printed stuff valuable. Panini just is all about money. And again, like I say, they are great at making that money, man. They are sure. Good. Right. Right. Okay. Ty, are you in on 2023 Prism at 300? Uh, um, I think, like Mike said, I, I think that this is. I think Panini learned on the first run that they can't apply that template to the wrestling community the first time around. So I think this is Panini's first real shot at Prism with WWE. Um, I think that they're, I wouldn't say I have fantastic expectations for it, but I think that they're a lot more realistic. Um, you know, the pre-sale prices are $300, not $900 Mm -hmm. that, you know, that alone tells you that they have a more realistic mindset with it. Um, I think prism, uh, like Mike was saying is, uh, it's, it's, it's just like the, the stable the, they're the cornerstone collecting product for Panini. You know, that's that's everybody's starting point, it seems. It doesn't matter what sport you go into. Um, and I think it'll always be that. Um, it's extremely overprinted, and it, it seems to be getting worse every year that passes. Um, and, you know, when you're getting to the point where prism golds aren't even, like, valuable anymore, like, that, that should be a red yeah. flag to everybody because at one point, Prism Gold, that that was what you want. Right now, people are just passing on Prism Gold like it's nothing because it's so watered down. It, it loses its meaning after a while. Right. And I I I don't have a definitive feeling about it because I feel like what we're gonna see this time is what we should have seen last year. Mm-hmm. So I kind of feel like I don't know what to expect because we didn't know what to expect last year. Mm-hmm. So that I'm, I kind of reset my feelings on it. I'm going into it with an open mind. They, they set a realistic pre, uh, pre-sale price on it. So I'll go into it with, with uh, realistic expectations and give it a realistic chance. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's, it's still just, you know, a watered down product and it, it, you can't get that meaning back when it's gone. I think yeah. that's ultimately what it comes down to. And, and that's the thing, too. I will break some boxes of this. I love breaking boxes. Again, I told, you know, I my buddy Chris at Cards Infinity, by the way, and anyone that sees this, cardsinfinity.com. His name is Chris Justice. This dude literally was the originator of online breaking. Like, I kid you not. I mean, this dude was, and he's the most trustworthy dude I've ever met. And he is so cool. Just easy to talk to, just an awesome guy. And I always break, you know, he always, you know, on the days the products drop, I always get in breaks with him. Yeah, he does serial number breaks, which I love. Um, so I'm going to open product, of it. don't get me wrong. But my expectations, even with regular Prism, I didn't even, I didn't even open those. I wasn't even going to, there was no way I was going to pay the prices. You were talking $120 for one pack. Stuff. Frig out of here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. $20 a pack? Okay, and I'm not guaranteed nothing. So, again, like I say, 
if you get the golds, if you get the, the, the shorter print cards, of course, you get those case hits. Of course, they're going to hold value. Anybody who goes out there and wants to say, oh, well, golds hold their value. And, um, oh, my God, well, the, you know, the um, color blasts hold their value. Of course they do. Of course they do. Look how hard they are to pull. But like Ty was saying, when the golds aren't holding their value is when it's really scary. So you want to compare somebody like Santos Escobar, right? Let's compare him to a basketball player, okay? Um, this is probably nobody's going to know who I'm talking about except for Ty and Mike um, that's watching this. But let's compare – oh, he was kind of popular. Let's compare Santos Escobar gold to pulling a Chauncey Billups gold back in the day, okay? Decent guy, right? But, you know, not – you know what I'm saying? Chauncey Billups. Play for the play for the University of Colorado. I know Chauncey Billups. Hey, well. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think too many wrestling fans are going to know. Yeah, what probably not. But what I'm saying in general, the point I'm trying to make is, a Chauncey Billups gold back in 2004 now. Prism is worth hundreds and hundreds of mm -hmm. dollars, and he's mm -hmm. just a regular star that won't be a Hall of Famer. That won't be any. He's a comparable to Santos Escobar in wrestling. So when the golds like Santos Escobar that are one in whatever, however many boxes aren't holding value, but 10, $20, there's a big issue there. Yeah. Big yeah. Red flag. And one other point, like I, I don't really ever hear anybody talk about wrestling. Isn't like football and basketball <laughs> and baseball where That's you like have, a, you have a fresh rookie class right. coming in nope. every year. Nope. Right. Like right. You, sometimes you get that one guy every couple of years that comes in or the one woman every couple of years that comes in that might be popular, but you're not replenishing the, the cards that people need to get. Like you have 10 rock golds at a prism next year. You're going to have 20 total between the two years. The year after that, you're going to have 30. Right. Like, like look back like at 2014 and 2015 tops gold like the 2015s aren't worth what the 2014s are even though they all have 50 right. so like wrestling's just different than a sport because you don't you're not replenishing the must have guys every year so it'll be interesting to see like how the pricing like you can't automatically assume oh well the rock gold was this amount last year so it'll be this amount this year no it doesn't usually work that way in anything else. So just a point I wanted to bring up. No, and that's 100% well, true because pin, pin, pin. you know what? Prospecting is not a thing in wrestling. I don't care what yeah, it's not at all. There's no such thing as prospecting in wrestling. Let's get that Let's get that straight right now, okay? Because you know what? Ron Breaker autographs sell for 50 bucks. Well, if you pull a Hogan autograph, you're getting 350. It's mm -hmm. the legends that you guys got to look for. In the yeah. It's not these young dudes. These young dude stuff ain't going to be worth that much until years to come. Of course, there's going to be young guys that sell for more than other young guys. Okay. Like a Braun Breaker is going to sell for more than a Von Wagner. Okay. But that ain't prospecting, man. Come on. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, like, wrestling in general they don't build mega stars like they did before no. so the odds of any of these guys ever being at john cena level or the rock level or even brock lesnar level like pretty slim in my opinion correct and that's why these vintage cards too you know mm -hmm. what i mean are, are going up in so much value because mm -hmm. those are the guys those are the legends those mm -hmm. are the you know what I mean? The wrestling all stars, the um, you know the 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 '90s, even the '85 Hogan's, the um, you know, even look at the Undertaker stuff and things like that. That's yeah. because these guys are so mm -hmm. established. You don't even know what you don't even know what league Von Wagner is going to be in. Is he even <laughs> in WWE anymore? Yeah, oh, he's still on NXT. Is he? Okay, he's, I don't watch. NXT. He's not going to make it, but yeah, he's there. <laughs> Okay, he might be in Ring of Honor next week. You know it what I'm saying? Be. We don't know. Tony Khan will sign him. You know that. <laughs> yeah, like, and then once he's, you know, once he's out of there, who cares about him? You know what I mean? Yep. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this up with one more question to tie into the theme of the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want each one of you to give me your good, your bad, and your ugly about the first year of Panini cards. Get us get started, Anthony. Uh, good, good. I would actually have two things because I like both of the sets. 
um, and uh, and that is um, Select and Revolution. I actually like both of them. I would say those are both good. Um, and the good thing about Revolution is it's affordable for a lot of people still buy that today. Um, the bad, I'm going to mention one set that we didn't talk about, but should be discussed, um, was Chronicles. Um, I'm not sure mm -hmm. why they built the Chronicles the way they did. Um, there are so many neat little sets within the main base set that they could have actually produced a whole separate product to, like some of the Flare Flare per se cards. Like you remember, you know what I'm saying when I'm saying Flare not mm -hmm. Ric Flair, but the Flair, yeah, yeah, Flair yeah, yeah. back in the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. why, 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 why didn't they take that and put that in a whole separate product? Have why a didn't they make an, 50 optic or 60? Set. an optic set? Yeah, been nice. same thing, you Except know? For, yeah. um, so that to me would be the bad. And the ugly is obvious, Prism. You know, I think Prism, anything that was associated with that from the very get-go is very, very ugly. I'll leave it as that. <laughs> okay. Mike? Um, honestly, the good, I mean, I, I do feel like a lot of good came out of it. Honestly, I really do. Because honestly, Panini does make some nice looking cards. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I do feel there's nice looking cards in, in pretty much every set they've made. Okay. Whether you like shiny cards, whether you like just kind of like that all white, real mm -hmm. nice on card autograph like they did with um, Impeccable and stuff like that. I think that there was a little bit of good in each set, okay? The bad, okay? The redemptions in IMAC. That, to me, is just, that's not how you put out a high-end set, okay? That's in incredibly bad. Um, the fact that you can't see all these beautiful on-card autos being pulled, which mm -hmm. is going to make more people say, I want that card. I'm going to mm -hmm. go buy a box. Okay, I think they shot themselves in the foot by having all them redemptions in there because people can't see that, um, you know, triple or quad DX on it and say, oh, my God, I got to have that. Yeah. You know what? I can't afford to spend $5,000 on that card. I'm going to go and try a box. I think they shot themselves in the foot with that. Okay. The ugly... Um, this is the ugly is what it brought to the hobby in general. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, drama, yeah. the bullshit, the pumper dumpers, the, you know, the, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's a damn expert. Everybody's <laughs> this, everybody's that. Um, and it's just a shit show every day. Honestly. Um, Panini brought a lot of ugliness out of a lot of people. And, um, I think it did more bad than good with okay. Panini getting the license than Tops having it. Also, Tops made the autographs for Undertaker and other guys very hard to get. They mm -hmm. were maybe one or two sets, not every single set. Um, they made the prod, they made those bigger hits more valuable. So, in general, am I going to still continue to break Panini products? Hell yes, I am, because that's what I love to do. I love to break cards. I love the rush, the adrenaline when you pull a big card out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just what collectors need to understand, the long and short of it is don't go buy a box and expect to hit a big card because you're just going to be disappointed. That's like yeah, walking into sure. a casino. That's like walking into a casino with $300 in your pocket and saying, I'm going to triple this money tonight. No. Yeah, only exactly. You're leaving with your pocket <laughs> <and> 10 <laughs> <and> homie. Okay. <laughs> Straight up. Right? Uh, save twenty dollars for a drink. <laughs> yeah. Just try and drink all you can because the drinks yep. are free. Okay. Try and drink all you can while you still have that three hundred dollars. Go play pie gal poker because you push most of the time. Okay. That's so long and short of it. I think everybody knows. I, I you know I'm I'm active enough in the um online community to know what I feel is good and what I feel is bad. Okay. Ty, you're good, bad, and ugly. All right. Um, my good, I would say, is two things. Number one being that Panini is actually giving WWE attention at all. Um, you know, there's some things that Panini doesn't even shrug a shoulder at. So I, I think that's the, that's the first good thing that I would say is that they actually give – not just one product to WWE, but they're actually mm -hmm. giving, you know, WWE proper attention. Yeah. Um, 
number two, I would say select. They actually absolutely yeah. just, you know, hit a home run. And I wish Prism went that well, but it didn't. Um, the bad, I would say, uh, I don't know. If, yeah, I guess I'll say that's the bad. Um, I would say, like Mike said, the, the toxicity it's brought into the hobby. Um, it definitely ripped like a whole new just ugliness out of people. Like I've known people for years that I knew pre Panini that were one way and post Panini mm -hmm. are definitely different people. And it's clear that the obvious indicator was the whole prism fallout, all of that. It just ripped nastiness out of people. People don't oh, like really so, it, man. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's the bad and the ugly, um, I mean, just the whole prism downfall. I mean, it, yeah. it, it sucked. I had so many collectors <laughs> got screwed over. Somebody, just uh, everybody, I feel like, got screwed. Like, that is the ultimate worst case scenario that could have happened. Yeah. I had two $900 boxes, so I, I felt <laughs> that one pretty hard. I at least it was out, only two. Yeah, I only bought two. So and you know what? At least I, they were, I still at least have a house here, so I'm okay. At least they were 900 man, and not 14 dude. Yeah, exactly. I should have sold them at 14 <laughs> so, Exactly. So if there, if there was a set that Panini could produce for you, um, which set would it be that they haven't yet? Because I'll tell you mine. They did it with basketball a couple of years ago, and I always loved the product. It came out of uh, – uh, Pinnacle back in 95 with baseball, aficionado. They did mm, that with uh, yeah. basketball recently. Man, I'd love them to do a wrestling set of that. What's, what, what are some sets that you guys would like to see them make that they haven't? I would love to see gold standard made. I love gold standard cards. I think they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I also, you know, optic, of course, obvi an obvious choice. <laughs> I mean, the beautiful white cards with the white backgrounds and the, the beautiful autographs on them, but um, in general, I've always been a, a big gold standard fan. And to be honest with you, they haven't made gold standard for any of their products, I think, in a couple of years, to be honest with you. Uh, I think they did football last year. Did they? Oh, they did do – see, I don't – If do, I remember right. I don't, yeah, and see, I don't collect football, so I wouldn't even know that. But, that, yeah, I mean, I love those. I love gold standard cards. I do love those. What about you, Ty? I would – I was going to – I mean, he took the answers right out of my mouth. I was going to say optic and then – if he didn't say that, I was going to say gold standard. So, uh, I mean, go. I'll say we just national treasures, I guess. But yeah, yeah, national treasures is nice too. Above my mm -hmm. price grade, but yeah, really nice. I think I'd go. I don't know something different. I'd do maybe Zenith because I'm mm -hmm. a big. You can't see it, but over my head here, I have a Zenith football Z team set from 1995. I put oh, together. Oh yeah, Zenith. So, yeah, you know, wow. yeah. Zenith and Pinnacle stuff just takes me back to to my shop and the zenith and the football this year has some really cool like early pacific prism kind of inserts in it so pacific, that'd be right up my alley oh my god that takes me back pacific, yeah. <laughs> pacific prism they were I, I, love, I love pacific products back in the day there, mm -hmm. there was so much value to those products i, I miss those yeah those were new all right guys well that was a good conversation i think we covered it all don't you yeah well, yep. I, Ty and Mike, I appreciate you guys joining us. This was a good time, and I don't thanks know. for having us. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Awesome. Take care, guys. We pre we appreciate you guys coming on. I just wanted to let everyone know that um, we will have a cool guest that's going to be coming on here shortly, and uh, I, I I look forward to. Uh, bringing this to the public for them to watch. That's get next guest that's going to be coming on. And uh, if you don't, if you haven't already, please subscribe to uh, Mike's uh, YouTube channel. Um, uh, let's get him up there numbers wise. He does a wonderful job for me, and I really appreciate it. And uh, and then the other thing I want to uh, announce is uh, going into uh, month of May. Our third podcast is going to be called the Foodies which uh, we're going to be highlighting everything that deals with promotions with cards and stickers, or whatever that was released with food related items with wrestling. So that is going to be a very in-depth show. And Mike, I will be calling you shortly, let you know there's a bunch of stuff that I'm going to be sending you that we're going to have nice. to implement those in. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> cool. well, that's and, uh, and, and I look, for I look forward to continue bringing you guys these shows. So th right. thanks for joining us. And uh, yep. if you guys got anything else you want to throw out there, throw it out there. I'm done. Thank you. All set. This was awesome. fun, and uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks, guys. Welcome. Are you guys, guys. live? <laughs> They're ah! awesome.
<laughs> hey, hey, how are you guys doing? How you doing, guys? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I wish I was hey, there. So, so uh, Dustin, are you there? <laughs> I'm right I, here. I miss, miss the days okay, of having cool. these WrestleMania parties. I got too old and now nobody comes over anymore. So <laughs> I used to do that all the time. You're welcome to join us anytime. <laughs> Where are hey, you guys so at? Thought, uh, we're about an hour northeast of Atlanta. Oh, okay. So, yeah, nice weather down there. I'll be right down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, yeah. so, so tell us, Dustin, a, 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 little, a, a little bit about your club, um, um, what you guys all do, the impact it has on the kids, and uh, normally how many, how many kids you'll have at your club. Go ahead and throw that out for us quick before we break, do the box break. Yeah, no problem. So normally we have about 15 show up on any given week. We have a little over 20 members. Uh, we're down today because of spring break. Um, so I, I can't help it when uh, people go out of town, obviously. Mm, yeah. But um, so, but uh, we meet once a week. We do a lot of video conferences. We've had video conferences this year with Thunder Rosa, Carly Bravo, Sean Dean, Buff Bagel, Eric Bischoff. Um, PJ Hawks. Um, who am I missing, fellas? Moose, Moose. Moose, uh, Moose did really good. He had some really good answers the for the kids. We did the Beast and Foxy Fierce yesterday from Wow. Uh, when we get back from spring break, we got Nick Aldis. Uh, we got oh, Scott man. Armstrong, and nice. uh, working on some uh, always working on some other stuff. So I tell you what, why don't why, why don't you cut the box open? Um, you're going to find one box inside that box, and that is that is a box that we sent. Now, this is a, this is a gift for you guys from me and Mike. Um, and the box inside that box is for the person who either has a uh, perfect attendance at school or maybe someone who was the uh, – well, what I would call the your exemplary student of the year. I'll let you decide that, and you can award that to them at a later time. Um, and uh, but everything else in that box is is there for them to bust open and have a good time. All right, can watch out. Can you say that again? It kind of cut out just a little bit. Um, there, inside that box, there's going to be a, another box. That box has a special gift for either the student with the uh, um, perfect attendance or the student that you think it exemplifies top student of the year. Um, and if you have a tie, then they can uh, take that box and divide it amongst the two of them. Just so, just so you guys know, that's something that you'll be able to look at in another month or two when school's out. Gotcha. We, I get, we can do that. We can do that. Okay. So go, so, so, go ahead, so go ahead and uh, so go ahead and rip it. This is this is a gift for me and Mike. Um, and the main reason why we're sending this is because I'm trying to promote wrestling clubs. I want to get it to where um, guys that are out there, if you have boxes of cards that you're not doing with, whether they're packs, regular cards, doesn't matter. If you want these to go to wrestling clubs, send them to Husker Haves. Uh, contact me. I will give you an email. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, address where to mail to and we're going to start sending this to wrestling clubs if you are an individual who has a wrestling club um, and you want to get on our mailing list contact me or mike and uh and we will get you going and or even you dustin they can get in contact with you and then you can send their information to me whatever works out best but we want to try to get it to where we're getting more and more of these products into kids hands who truly enjoy wrestling and make this something fun for them and exciting because they're the fans of uh of uh one of the greatest hobbies that's out there and that's wrestling okay let's rip it okay i can't wait <laughs> Oh, this, oh, this is a bunch, bro. <laughs> this is a bunch. Wait, what? I got a rip for that. <laughs> oh, this is a bunch. Get it all out. Get it all out. Whoa. You can't take all of it. What's wrong, you guys? Wow, this is a bunch. Start opening them up. I got a chip. 
You got to open it up. <laughs> oh, I was chipping. Who'd you get? All right, okay. I got. Oh, my God, two, three chips. Four chips. Four chips. I got Mark Henry, 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 Mark <laughs> so much gas. I got the rock. Nice. There you go. Cool. So, show him right here. Oh, Mick Fullen. Mick Fullen. Mick Fullen. <laughs> oh, Mick Fullen. He's a good wrestler. He's a good wrestler. Victor, what do you got, buddy? Oh, you got Stone Cold? I got something. Nice. Got Kane. Oh, Gangrel. We have heard Gangrel will be at WrestleMania. Have y'all heard that? I've yeah. heard that rumor, yeah. Oh, look what you get. Look. Lisa, what you get? Ooh. He got a gold coin. He got Who did he get? He just got in the hall of fame. That's, that's awesome. Ooh. And he just went in the hall of fame, too. That makes it even better. <laughs> oh, yes, you got, got Ken, Ken Shamrock? Shamrock? Yes. Ken Shamrock. Cool. Oh, right here. Right so Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock did a phone conference with us a few years ago. He was really good. Great. Cool. Well, hey, hey, hey Dustin, I just want to, I just want to, I want to end it just saying um, that uh, we will try to put something more together uh, in the future when I got more product to send you guys. Um, I hope the kids enjoyed everything. I hope they can trade. Um, everyone get who they want. Is there anything that you want to add before we let you go? I just want to let everybody know, like I said previously, I want to, I want to try to do everything we can to promote these organizations. Um, and if people have any cards that they want to get to you guys, they can get that. You do that through me. If you have any other organizations out there, anything that you want to add before we let you guys go? Uh, just th thank you so much. I mean, this means you saw how much fun those kids were having yep. and everything. And that that's, that, that's what it's all yeah. about. You, you know. Absolutely. And um, I'll get y'all some club shirts. We're we're broke right now. But uh, whenever we get some more money in, I'll order more shirts and I'll get y'all some shirts. And that's the least I can do for a thank you. But just thank you for supporting us, and because that that means the world to us, it really does. And um, you, you know, you saw how much fun all those kids were having; they were just having a blast. Really? So, but That's thank great. you for you, you know just for what you're doing for pro wrestling in of itself, because y'all are helping promote. I mean, you're helping us, but you're essentially you're really helping pro wrestling too. So, thank you for what you're doing for pro wrestling. So, I mean, I don't have to tell you how important it is because it's obviously important to all of us. You're right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. Well, I, I, so, uh, I, I have a, I have a special set in that box. Um, so whoever you deem um, um, worthy of that at the very end of the year, um, let us know and uh, try to get a good video if you can of them busting that open so that we can put that online also. I will. So probably what I'll, I'll do at the end of the year is I'll go and I'll look at their grades and then I'll no. go back. And so we, we, our club is run off of like five basic, fundamentals uh beliefs of uh, being responsible being respectful uh not being passive good leadership and um uh volunteering and i'll look back Doctor. and i'll see who who who's at the top of all these qualities who's grown the most you know ha, you know have they went and volunteered every time we went and volunteered you know uh you know go ask their teachers how responsible is Vinny? is Vinny being responsible in class you know is, uh, you know, are they being respectful to their teachers, to their peers, that kind of stuff. And then just, you know, go, go from there. Fantastic. Sounds good. Sounds that, good. That's, a, that's so like when we do our video conferences, that's what we, I mean, we have our fun questions, you know, like what's on your playlist. What are the numbers on back of the chips mean? Uh, the numbers on back of the chips um, are the chips or the medallions? I got number one. 
let's let's see let's see yeah the medall the medallions i think if i'm not mistaken i think there's 48 totally di 48 different medallions and they're actually numbered uh on the set if you open up a pack you'll see a little flyer inside it's like a little trifold it'll have all the names of every medallion and the number and that's just this complete set that ties you how who's in the complete set in number order that they are so go back inside and uh, look on your table find one of the little flyers and open it up and should give you a checklist of who's all in it <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So, but uh, what I was getting ready to say was when, so whenever we do our video conferences with talent, you know, we have our fun questions like what's on your playlist, you know, what's your favorite movie? Where do you take your wife on date night? Or, um, you, you know, sometimes we ask, uh, you know, who's your favorite civil rights leader, you, you know, or we may ask, uh, but, but we, we get back to our core beliefs of, responsibility, respectfulness. So we ask them, you know, what's the best way to earn respect? You know, why is it important to volunteer? You know, so now they're hearing from their heroes, why it's important to volunteer in the community? Why it's important to uh, to earn people's respect and how to earn people's respect? You, you know, because it's it's one thing for, for their parent to tell them, it's one thing for, for myself as a teacher to tell them, but now when you, when you get their heroes telling them something, Boy, now mm -hmm. we're taking it up a few notches, you, you know, so that and that's really what we're just trying to do is it's really mentoring through pro wrestling. So fantastic. All right. Well, thanks so much. I mean, you do a great job down there. That's awesome what you're doing. And, you know, it was a lot of fun <laughs> hearing them and seeing how excited they were ripping all that stuff. That, that was a joy. So that really made yeah. my day. Yeah. Oh, it made it made my day too because uh, I was all nervous. I wasn't sure how they were gonna do, and mm -hmm. uh, we're missing we're missing a solid ten kids, which which I had told you earlier, and so we had to reschedule our video conference. We had a video conference set up with uh, Dynamite Kids family today, and wow. uh, we had we had to reschedule it because I wanted more than five kids to hear what they had to say because you know their story is really important. Yeah, you know, because sure. it touches on a lot of really important things in life. Cause like at the end of the day, I don't know what these kids are going through at home. So, you, you, you know, they may say something that may resonate with them and everything. And that can be awfully important And there. And I, when we were asking the kids, I said, do y'all want to do it? Or do y'all want to reschedule it where your peers can hear it too? You know, the rest of those kids can hear it. And they wanted to wait so their friends could hear it, hear what they had to say, which speaks a lot on the kids here too. Cause they, easily could have been selfish and said no let's do it now yeah that's great well i think i think i think an interesting thing and and i and i can relate to this from growing up on a farm and uh my parents didn't have a lot of income um but we used to get packs of cards and you know you'd be in school and it didn't matter. It didn't matter if you were the wealthiest kid in town. It didn't matter if you were the poorest kid in town. It didn't matter what, but when you would bust open a, a pack of cards and you would get say a Hulk Hogan that someone else wanted, guess what? You are there now trading. You are now bartering. You're there working and you are all equals because that's what everyone was doing. They were, they were, they, they were there having fun, which is what I think is the most important thing when it comes to the hobby. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And one of the things I love about this club is like everyone's everyone's an equal. Like there is no, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you know, one of the great things is like uh, a good percentage of the kids in this club are students with special needs. And um, they are kids that that aren't recruited by football. They're not they're not in band. They're not in any other club, but they found their niche with pro wrestling. And everybody's, everybody's the same, you, you know, I mean, no one's, there is no quarterback here. There, you, you know, right. there's no point right. over here, you know, everyone right. has the same role, you, you know, and, and the kids, they, they love it. They love it. You, you, you know, because they, everybody wants to belong, you know, mm -hmm. everybody wants yep. to belong. And it's like, I told my principal, I said, we got to reach the kids before they start breaking bad. Yep, you know, yep. and, um, you, you know, and I was telling, I forget which wrestler I was telling this to, but I was like, there's no telling how many uh, kids didn't get into drugs because, uh, or drugs or whatever, uh, because right. they found wrestling. Right. You know, I think that might've been Scott Armstrong. I was talking to about that. And uh, because I mean, it's true. Cause like pro wrestling was always there for me as a kid. 
and uh, it kept me out of trouble. There ain't no doubt about that. So I was I, I, I was stationed years ago overseas in uh, the UK, and believe it or not, one of the one of the big things that was uh, over there besides wrestling that was really impactful for a lot of youth was boxing clubs. Um, and you would have a lot of kids like you saw there into boxing, and it was just amazing how many of those kids' lives could change or turn around because they found something that they were passionate about, something that other people besides maybe a family or brother or sister would listen to them and see what they were doing, and they really loved it. So, you know, I just yeah. – I just from the bottom of my heart, I wish you guys the best of luck. And like I said, everything that we said was from me and Mike. And uh, we are so thankful that you guys had a good time. And if there's anything you guys need from us in the future, let us know. But I will try to get you another box in the next couple of months. Maybe we'll do one at the beginning of school year around August. And uh, oh, that way you guys can do that. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, that, that way you could, you could use that going into the next school year. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fantastic. And uh, like I said, I'll get you all a club shirt. Uh, when I get some money, well, I'm, I mean, I'm getting ready to put another order in. I got another, uh, donor who's like, who's like, just send me the, uh, the bill and don't worry about the other, you, you know, but just send me the bill. So I'm getting ready right. to order some shirts. So I'll, I'll get y'all some shirts, uh, hopefully in the next month. Great. Gotcha. Thank you very so, uh, much. It was, it was great. It, it was great having you on. I just want to say God bless to you and all the kids. And, uh, um, from, for me and Mike, we wish you guys the best uh, with the remaining school year and uh, with the upcoming school year coming next. I appreciate it. Go Cody. All right. Go Cody. Cool. <laughs> Take care. Hey, thank you. All right. Bye-bye.